Hello, and welcome to my presentation today. My research focus is the prevalence of substance doping, intentional misrepresentation, and boosting in para sport. Doping in sport is regulated by the World Anti-Doping Agency through the WADA Code. The WADA Code has eight international standards, one of which is the prohibited list, which lists substances and methods that are banned in sport. For these substances and methods to be included within the code, they have to meet two of the three following criteria. One, is it performance enhancing? Two, is it a risk to health for the athlete? And three, is it against the spirit of sport? Athletes are bound under 11 anti-doping rule violations with para-athletes subjected to the same anti-doping regulations as Olympic athletes. However, there are two para-specific cheating methods that are currently not in the WADA code and which we focus on today. The first para-specific cheating method is intentional misrepresentation or classification doping. This is where an athlete over-exaggerates their level of impairment during the classification process to compete in a class that does not truly represent the level of impairment therefore increases, increasing the likelihood of that athlete potentially getting a medal. It is measured through assessments pre-competition regulated by the International Paralympic Committee to make sure that the athlete is in the right class. If an athlete is found to be guilty of intentionally misrepresenting their disability, they face a ban of up to four years like doping. When it comes to rates and prevalence rates, well, we just don't know. There's never been a study that's actually looked into this. There's been two known cases in history where athletes have received a sanction for IM. However, in, in 2015-16, the IPC received 80 potential cases, but none led to any sanctions. So how does intentional misrepresentation relate to the WADA code? Well, one, it meets two out of three criteria for inclusion within the code. And two, it can be considered as tampering. So like tampering of the anti-doping process, which is an anti-doping rule violation, para-athletes tamper with the classification process. The second para-specific cheating method is autonomic dyslexia or boosting. AD is, is common in individuals with spinal cord injuries at T6 or above. It is the excessive onset of high blood pressure. So therefore boosting is the purposeful onset of increased blood pressure by self-harming methods, which could lead to really bad health consequences. It is measured and regulated through the blood pressure taken from athletes with spinal cord injuries 10 minutes before competition with a threshold of 160. Athletes found to be boosting face being banned from that particular competition. When it comes to prevalence rates, no athlete has ever tested positive for such a method. However, prevalence rates are estimated at 16% of a performance benefit between 7 and 15%. So how does this relate to the WADA code? Well, like IM, it meets two out of the three criteria for inclusion within the code. And two, boosting and blood doping are both relatable as they both are manipulating your biological traits to enhance performance. And we know that blood doping is a banned method in the code. So how can these methods be included within the WADA code? Well, with intentional misrepresentation, as stated previously, it can be comparable to tampering, tampering like the anti-doping process. Athlete, Para-athletes can tamper with the classification process to manipulate the outcome. However, how can this be regulated under the WADA code? Well, a classification passport in or out of competition could be implemented. So basically, Athletes' assessments are tracked over time to see if there's any significant changes. And obviously, therefore, 
a four year ban could be implemented like doping. So I am in the future could potentially be the 12th anti-doping rule violation. When it comes to boosting, as previously stated, it could be compared to blood doping. And we know that blood doping is a banned method. But how can this be regulated within the code? Well, blood doping uses an athlete biological passport to track markers of doping over time. This has been a real game changer in the anti-doping um, system. Boosting, therefore, can use an athlete blood pressure passport to track blood pressure over time. Now, what makes this great is that this could be implemented within the anti-doping process. Therefore, blood pressure could be taken for athletes that have spinal cord injuries with blood and urine. And because it doesn't have to be stored because it's all data, it's actually quite cost-effective and athletes could receive a four-year ban. So like blood doping, boosting could be a ban method going forward. However, these two methods and what I've, what I've just suggested are not based on any current data at the moment. And this is where my research lies. I'll be collecting data in the near future to try and, and try and make sure that I come up with answers to these questions. So why is my research important? Well, anti-doping studies focus on Olympic sport and able body sport are not para sport. It is the first study to measure cheating prevalences, specifically in para sport. And through my research and my data collection, does Ironman boosting warrant further investigation regarding the inclusion uh, within the water code? Or does it relate more to integrity? because we know that the water code is based on substances but are not cheating methods. So does the water code need to change its definition or do, the, do these two para-specific methods need to be looked at more as an integrity? Thank you for listening to my presentation and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.